Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. I want to say Happy New Year to everyone. Amen. Not a hopeful New Year, but a happy New Year. Amen. I know some people have been so doubtful throughout the last couple of years, but let us be happy in this new year, for God has blessed us and Amen. he has kept us. So yeah. let us be happy in this in this new year ahead of us. Amen. Let us be prayerful for Pastor Finley as he continues to heal uh, from his surgery. And uh, this morning I will bring the word to you. So please pray for me this morning as God uh, needs to give me strength Amen. In, this, Amen. in these services this morning. Amen. Normally we recite our purpose this morning, and so will you please join me as we recite our purpose. Our purpose. Our purpose is to share the love of Christ, to be dedicated in service to others, to be disciplined in giving, responsible in stewardship, true in worship, faithful in prayer, and passionate in the study of God's word. All right, let us praise the Lord this morning. Let us continue to pray for one another and God richly keep us. Amen. 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 I give myself to you, Lord. Life. God, that you can use all of us in the glory of your kingdom, Lord, that we would lift up your name in praise as we have already done, Lord, because of your goodness, because of your mercy, because you're so good, and your wonder needs to be seen all over the world, how good you are, and so I pray all that you use us, Lord, unto your glory, unto your kingdom, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we might know you, that we might know how good you are and what we have inherited in your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your strength you've given us. Thank you for being a comforter to us, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your power and your strength, Lord. Thank you for keeping us, Lord. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are to be praised and worshiped today, Lord, for all that you have done. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 Well, to all, I wish you a happy New Year. God just keeps on blessing you like he already has. God has been blessing us. Amen. He has been so good and so wonderful to, to us. And he just keeps on blessing us. Uh, my sister sent me this and I just wish this for you as well. 
May 2022 New Year's wishes for you. 12 months of happiness, 52 weeks of laughter, 365 days of success, 8,766 hours of good health, 525,600 minutes of blessings, 331,536,000 seconds of joy. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy, happy, happy New Year. God has got to be blessing us. God has got to be keeping us. And he keeps on blessing us. So we thank God for his blessings. Turn with me this morning to Ephesians, the third chapter. do give all honor to God and to Pastor Finley and to you, my brothers and sisters. It's, God has uh, continued to bless you. I'll begin reading at the 19th verse, Ephesians, the third chapter. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that work in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I give title to this. God is able. God is able to keep you this year. God is able to bless you this year. God is able. You may be seated. God is able. God is able. We must rely on his ability and who God is. The Supreme Court in the highest courts of appeals, they've got all kind of courts that lead up to the Supreme Court. The lower courts may make all kind of decisions, but if the Supreme Court decides to hear a case, it is irrelevant what other courts have decided. If the Supreme Court decides, it will hear an issue. It doesn't matter what the lower courts have decided. Only what the Supreme Court rules sticks. All others, no matter how powerful, just or unjust, must pale in significance when the Supreme Court rules. I don't know who has made a decision in your life. I don't know what courts have ruled on your circumstance. It may have been the court of your employer who has ruled that you will never leave this position. It may be the court of your finances that has decided you will never better your lifestyle. It may be the court of the doctors that said, we can't fix that disease. But at least appeal to the Supreme Court. At least place your docket up there on that God can decide what the final rendering is. If he takes your case, it doesn't matter what the court of your employer says. It doesn't matter what the court of the doctor said or the court of the lawyer said. Has God said? Because when the courts speak, all other courts 
are irrelevant. When God speaks, because God is able, God is able to fix your situation. God is able to fix your disease. God is able to fix wherever you at today. God is able. The court of supreme court matters. Written in 61 AD to the Ephesian Christians that were in the environment of people that looked to other gods that they thought had power to do some amazing things. Paul had spent two years in Ephesus preaching the gospel to these pagans at the mindset of all systems of belief is the thought of attaining greatness and a good life through their gods. Little God, little G. Paul is telling them that God is able to do more than you can ask or think. God is able to do it by the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave. I am sure they are saying to Paul that yeah, he is able to work in the church, but Paul, you have not seen the things that I've gone through at home and on my job. Paul knows that they're using mind-altering substance and religion to cope. He says, do not be drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with God's ability and what God can do. Paul says in the letter to them that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul is starting to get drunk on what he has written to them. He is going into what is called a doxology of praise. As I was reading this sermon, I too began to go into a doxology of praise. As I would begin to have great confidence in God and in God's great power. God is able and he has great capabilities to do great things. And so we rely on this confidence in God and what he is capable of doing even in our lives. I, uh, as I was telling uh, Brother Hunt on last Wednesday, I was amused by the fact that he had began to read my notes from way across town. I don't know how he was able to do it, but the Holy Spirit is always at work in us. And so to demonstrate this God's supreme power and how he is working in us and how he works to God's glory forever, that's going to be my three points, how God is in his supreme power, how he is working in us, and how he works to God's glory. I use this flashlight to explain. This flashlight, inside of this flashlight, is a battery pack. This battery pack has three AAA batteries in it. And those three batteries, as you see, make one. Now, in this battery pack, even though you have all three, uh, if you've ever put in batteries to de in uh, uh, any type of system, you know you got to have the batteries in the right direction. Uh, you can't turn them upside down and have two of them right side up and have one upside down. So many people have put the third one, Jesus, upside down, and they can't figure out why come they can't find the power and what's wrong with their power source because you haven't put the third one in its right perspective and in its right place because they all make one in order to give light, in order to give power out. And so we see that. Where does this sit at? This sits inside the power source is inside. The power source is inside. The power source is inside. Your power source is inside. The power is within. And so you got to recognize where is the power. And so we put the uh, 
put the uh, screw back on this here. And uh, as I try to figure out how to put it back together. <laughs> and uh, for some reason, it don't work. For some reason, it don't work. What's wrong? Come on, let's screw it a little bit tighter. Let's screw it. Ha ha! We got light. <sighs> if you don't get close enough to the power, it don't work. If you don't get close enough to the power. Now, you notice in some of your battery systems, there's a little bit of corrosion on there, and you got to clean the corrosion off and make the connection. So sometimes some of us got a little corrosion going on in our life, and you got to clean off some of the corrosion so it'll start working, right? And so here we uh, not only understand that the power is within, and we understand that we got to get closer, but here's the other thing. Hit the switch. You, you, you got to turn it on. The power has not changed. It's just the fact that you got to turn the switch on. In order for your light to shine, you, you got to turn the switch on or else nothing is happening. Because you ain't turned the switch on. Oh, I got great faith in this power. I believe that he's able. But I don't turn the switch on, then it's, it's irrelevant if you don't turn the switch on. You, you got to turn the switch on in your life. There is some issues that are going on in our life, and until we turn the switch on, nothing is going to happen. Oh, yeah, he's able. He's able. Yeah, yeah, we, we preach that. We teach that. We shout that. We say that in the church, but when are we going to turn the switch on? To give God glory. To give God glory. You, you got to turn the switch on even within these services because we got to recognize it's to God's glory. And so when you say amen, it's not for me. It's not to my glory. It's about you turning the switch on to give God glory. See, there is something, there is a power that's working within you. And until you turn the switch on, God doesn't get glory at all. God is the one that is getting glory out of all of this. What the battery shows to us is, is that when we see the light, that recognizes that there is power inside, right? That, that lets us know that there is a battery inside. Mm, I hope that didn't fly over your head. When we recognize what's on the outside, it shows us what's on the inside. The ability of God is within us. But we have to recognize what that power is. The Father is working above all. He is all powerful and all supreme. We are talking about a battery source that has more power than you can imagine, than you can ever think. You can even pray for it. He is beyond, exceedingly above. Paul didn't just say one word, he's able. But he had to say exceedingly he didn't have to just say exceedingly. He had to add to some adjectives to what this ability of God was, but that he is abundantly above all than we can ask or think. Understanding his power. Where is this power? In Ephesians 4 and 6 it says, One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, where else is he? And in you all. There it is. This power is at work in you. How great is this power? Psalms 96 and 4 says, For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. God is the great power source of all. 
as Paul was talking to these that didn't understand who God is as they were trying to raise who their God was. But God is above all gods. Who else is above all? Jesus Christ having faith in him confirms that he is real, that he is above all. We must change our battery. You may have run out of uh, power and, and your battery is not working anymore because it done ran out of some juice. Well, that's because you're using the wrong battery. This battery I'm talking about don't never run out. <laughs> and so you, can, you need to change your battery. His power is beyond what we ask or think. When our thinking gets outside of the box, we will begin to rely on a new power source. Here the Gnostics were a group of people who believed that Jesus never had a body and that he was a spirit. They believed that he was only revealed in our thinking. Paul is addressing this belief that God is above our thinking. We have this, not only did the Gnostics have it, which the Gnostics were in the church, but we have some of that same thinking within our Christian society today. That we are saying things like, think and grow rich. We think that thinking has to do with our success. We think if, if, if that I need to put some, some positive thoughts in my life. If I could just put some positive things, if, if I could just get my thinking straight, and so if, they, if I can bring in some thinking. But here Paul says that God is beyond your thinking. And what you need to do is get your thinking outside of the box and, and begin to realize the ability of God. It's not relied on your thinking. It's relied on the power of God. We get, need to be supportive of the power of God and dependent upon his power. Because if we rely on his power, his power will never run out. Because if I, if I rely on my power, I, I will end up uh, being uh, a, a, uh, uh, changing my mind from day to day. I feel good one day and I'm down the next. Because I don't run out of power. And now I'm depressed, but when I depend on the power of God, it will last forever. Second point, Jesus Christ is working in you according to the power that works in us. What is working in us? The working power of God, the same ability that God that raised Christ from the dead will raise us from our deadness also. God's law of resurrection from the dead, Philippians 3, 10 through 11 says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Huh? Did that say right? Suffering. It's hard for me to understand that. I, I, I don't really like suffering. We don't like suffering. It just, it just doesn't sound right. right. He says being conformed to his death. I'm trying to get some power going here now. If by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. So this is what I'm asking y'all. To get on the elevator. Get on the elevator. See, what, what, what I've been doing before is I've been using another battery. And, and, and on that elevator, that elevator don't have a lot of power. It only takes me to the second floor. And what I have done is gotten on the wrong elevator. And so it's about positioning. When I position myself in this death of Christ, this elevator goes all the way up. This elevator don't stop on the first, second, third floor. This elevator goes all the way up because this elevator has this power source in it. Now, here's the problem with what we normally have is in power, 
as you notice, you have a positive and a negative, right? And so when you can't connect to the positive or the negative, the power will not run through. And so I can connect to the resurrection, but I can't connect to the suffering. And so, I, I, so therefore, this power that is working within, Paul is saying, you got to understand the suffering as well. So in a few verses before, he talks about being grounded in love. <clears throat> See, so, so, so we got to be grounded in love. When you get grounded, make a good connection. You got to make a good connection with folks. Those folks that you can't stand. Those folks that you can't deal with all the time. Those folks that you want, don't want to deal with on your job. Those folks that's in your family that's just as ignorant as they can be. But you got to be grounded in love. Yeah, there's a little bit of suffering you got to deal with sometimes. But guess what? We're trying to make the light shine. Remember, we're trying to make the light shine. So we got we to be grounded in love. So, so let, me, let me give this example of the Ohm's Law. I gave you the resurrection law, but here's the Ohm's law within this light source. This is, what, this is what we see. In here, we have three things happening. We have current times resistance equals power. Okay, if anybody like, uh, I'm sure Brother Simmons, uh, this is some of his first stuff as he started out. We, we have to understand that of how power sources work. Because in power sources, as you see here, as I said, current times resistance equals power. The resistance is the element on the end here. That's your resistor, okay? The current is what's working, the energy that's working inside here as we have this, this power source in here, right? And so the outside you see the light. So this is the power. Now, how can we make this light brighter? You can times two the current or the resistance. And it will times two the power and the light gets brighter. So, it, it, so if the resistance, the suffering goes up, the light goes up. Right? So if you can get the current to go up, the light also goes up, and the power shows brighter. So it's hard to understand the suffering that we have to go through, but the power and the glory of God shines brighter. So, 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 so what we need to do is, if the resistance has gone up in your life, times two the current. Times two, what's inside of you. T -t Times two, bring that up a little bit. Bring your praise up just a little bit higher. Bring what God has done in your life, the power source. Bring it up just a little bit, and then God will get glory in your life. God is able to do abundantly above what we ask and even what we think. God is able to work in your life. For the word Paul says to the power that worketh in us. Worketh in us in Greek, the word says energo, where we get the word energy. This describes the energy that is working in us like an electrical current energizes the light bulb. The bulb is the glory and the power of God. God is at work in us. And it is a light that needs to shine forever. So I finish out with my third point, my last point. How do we make that energy last forever? The Holy Spirit is working forever to God's glory. 
To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This eternal power. So we've talked about the Father is above all. We realize what power and ability is in us, that God is great. He is supreme. He is great. He is greatly to be praised. And so here is God above all and above all gods. And then we look at Jesus Christ that is working in us as he begins to, to work in our lives, as he begins to work in our hearts. God is working in you. And now we see that the Holy Spirit is working forever to God's glory. But Paul has done, as you, as we read this uh, text in this glory that, that uh, Paul describes, is what is called a doxology. A doxology is simply a praise to God. What Paul is talking about here is a perpetual praise, a praise that don't stop, a praise that started out somewhere and, and it just kept on going. It just, it just kept on praising God. So even when we get to heaven, we're going to be perpetually praising God and just keep on praising God. The light is never going to go out because of what God did in the beginning of time, this perpetual praise keeps on. So Paul starts looking at this power to create this world by the power of his word. Mm, 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 mm. That's the power source. If you want to look at this battery and, and look at this light, you got to see the whole thing. How is this light shining? This light is shining because there was a power source inside that you know for sure that there is power inside this battery. So if, 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 if Jesus rose from the dead, it is because we know that there is a power source that got him up from the dead. So you tell me that Jesus did not raise from the dead? Yes, he did, because I know that he rose from the dead. It is in us right now because the power source is continuing to glow. And this light is keep it. If somebody asks you, why are you glowing like you're glowing? Ah, because Jesus done rose from the dead. That's why I'm glowing like I'm glowing. Uh, that's why I'm glorifying his name because of what he did because there is a perpetual praise that's got to go in us and work in us. We must have, have been looking at this Jesus Paul was looking at this Jesus, how he became flesh, how this word had became flesh, perpetually God's word in existence, even through Jesus Christ. And we must, he must have also gone into this praise as he had wrote in, in the first chapter of Ephesians as he begins to talk about what he wants for these Ephesians. Take time to read the first chapter of Ephesians because here's where Paul starts off talking about this that is within us and how he is praying for us. That this is this fullness that we will be filled with this fullness. That we will be filled with this power and be filled with God's glory, that his glory will come out of us. And so here is Paul that he begins to talk about something now. Mind you, Paul must have looked back at these words as he went into this doxology of praise because Paul must have been going back over his letter. I, I, I can just imagine that he's going back over this letter and he is beginning to now give God praise as to what he's capable of of doing as Paul began to think about himself and how God had brought him up and how God had blessed him. You also must think about where you was and how dead you was and how your battery wasn't working. But the ability of God is what has done in your life what he has done now. And so here Paul is talking about, he starts off talking about this predestination. <laughs> 
uh, what he had done before what well, before you were born, before he, he was even known in, in, your womb, in the womb of your mother and what God had did, he had done something way back then, right? So where does this power come from? How are you alive right now? How are you praising God right now? It is a perpetual praise. God started something off in you way back then. <laughs> and so pray, he is praising God for what's in him and what God is doing in him, even as he talks about this adoption, how God has adopted me. I was this child that wasn't doing right, but God adopted me anyways. It wasn't that he didn't know how bad I was. He didn't, it wasn't like he didn't know how much I was sinning. But God adopted me anyways. Oh, man, Paul must have been praying. He must, he started to get drunk like we got to get drunk on this word. Be filled with the spirit because God has a power source, a current going through our lives because of his goodness. And then he must have been talking about this grace and how God favored him and how God has favored us and given us grace. That he's saying, look, I don't care about what you're doing. I don't care about you not having no power. All you got to do is turn on the switch. All you got to do is turn on the switch. All you got to do is make a little connection. Just get a little bit tighter to God. And then allow this to go through you because God has been good to us. And that's got to start working in us. We have really been moved by his redemption and what he has done to bring us out. We got to get on the elevator. You got to get on the elevator. You got to get on the elevator. You got to position yourself on this elevator because you're not going to go to the top floor if you keep relying on the power that you've been relying on because this power in redemption huh, will bring us out. Huh. This power of, it, 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 it says, look here, I got to go all the way over here to Spencer to get you out and I got to pay your bail to get you out. I got to go to Spencer Jailhouse and get you out. I love you. I care about you. I don't care about what you did, but I had to come all the way from heaven to get you out. That's redemption. That's redemption. That's redemption. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my son. I'm going to send my son. I'm going to send my son to get you out. I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to give his life for you. Man, that's getting you out. That's getting you out. That gets me drunk. That gets me high. That gets me into a praise of how good God is. And then I got to think about the inheritance and, 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 and how rich I am in the riches of his glory, in the riches of who he is, and in the riches of what God is trying to do in us. We will allow this inheritance to begin to work in us. But here is where Paul really must have got excited. He must have really got him to take this praise break was when he starts looking at the power that raised Jesus from the dead. That, that must have been what really got him excited. That must have been what really got him to praising God as he began to look at this power source that was capable of re raising Jesus from the dead. See, it was Oh, you see light now, but it was one dark Friday. It, it wasn't no light at all, but it was, it, it, was, it was really dark. It was really dark on that Friday. And, 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 and while it was dark, they had crucified my Savior. They thought they was going to be able to turn the light out. Uh, they thought that he would be out because as they sat there and watched him for three days and three nights, it, it, it stayed dark. And so we thought we had got the battery source all taken care of. We knew that they, they wouldn't rely on this power source. They knew that they wouldn't depend on this, this power source. But all of a sudden, one Sunday morning, he got up. He got up with all power, with all power in his hand. And so we know what the power source is. We know that we can depend on this power source because if we're depending on the ability of God, God will not let us down. God will not let us down. This morning when uh, I, got, I got ready normally, I, I have my iPad 
everything ready and and I'm, you know, look at a whole lot of stuff in the scriptures and everything. And so I said, well, let me look at it right quick. I pushed the button. It was dead. I hadn't plugged it in a few days. So it was dead. This battery will keep on going down. The battery will go out every time I turn around. And so if I have to depend on this, then something can happen to this at any point, at any time. But God is able. God does never go out. His power source will never go out. And so if you depend on him, and if you depend on him for your salvation, if you're wondering whether or not you'll get up from the grave when that time comes, you can depend on that, on that source of power because God is able. Don't fear death. Don't fear anything because we're depending on a greater power, a higher power than ourselves because what you're doing is keeping yourself inside of a box. You're not allowing yourself to get outside of your thinking. But he's able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. Who would have known how I had been preaching up here? I, this is beyond what God in my thinking. This is beyond what I was thinking. Allow yourself to go beyond where God is able to take you. God is able to do some great things in your life. God is able to move some great things in your life. God can give you comfort when you wouldn't think that you could have gotten comfort. God is able to do abundantly above what you ask or think, and that means what you also pray for. What you ask. That's, that, that's a wide range of what God can do and his ability of what God is able to do. God is able to do some great thing in your life. Now uh, is all. Maybe you didn't know that there was salvation in Jesus Christ. Maybe you didn't know that God would raise you from the dead. Maybe you haven't really truly given your life. Maybe you haven't made that connection. Maybe you haven't turned on the switch and said, God, save. If that's your prayer, those that are on uh, Facebook or streaming on the pew, make that connection with Jesus Christ. Make that connection, and, and, and you can say in the chat, I want to be saved. And somebody will be in contact with you. But if you're here today and, 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 and realize the ability of God and what God is able to do, God's able to save you, save you from your sin, save you from your deadness. Your battery has gone out. God is able to do abundantly above more than you can ask or think. He can do some great things in your life. And now is the time to come. But secondly, maybe you've backslidden. Maybe you've made the wrong decisions in your life. You got on the wrong elevator. But now you realize you, you, you need to get on the right elevator, get on the right system. And uh, you just need prayer. And that you need to depend on the ability of God. Because God is able. Mm. If you could just recognize, if you just hear that and God saying, I'm able, I'm able, I'm able, I'm able, I'm able, I'm able to do more than you can ask to think. 
just got to get in the power source. If you just depend on him, just depend on him and make that connection with God. Because God is able today to do whatever you might be asking of him. If you're looking for a church home, this is the place that you can find your purpose. There is power in purpose. Maybe you don't have any purpose in your life. Maybe you don't have a connection, a place that you can make a connection. Here's a place that you can make a connection. Connect to people. I know we're not all the perfect people. Like I said, it's some negative too. That's a part of it. You, you just got to connect. Make a connection. And so here is an opportunity for you to come now and make your determination to God that it's what I want to do. Though no one has come here, let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you, O oh Lord, for what you have done. Because we have been dependent upon your ability. So we thank you, Lord, for what you have done in our lives. We thank you, Lord, how you have transitioned us and how you have made things different in our lives. And we pray, Lord, that we can shine the way that you want us to shine your light, Lord. Let us let that be our prayer even for this year that we shine, that we give gl glory to God, that God is seen and his, his great ability is seen in our lives. What you can do in me, you can do in others, simply because I relied on the power source. And so I pray, even as Paul prayed, that you will be filled with the fullness of God, dependent upon that fullness being filled with him. So I pray your strength in the Lord, that God continues to strengthen you and that God keep, continues to keep you is my prayer. Amen. Amen.